I love the 3D capabilities in Photoshop CC. Not only are they really powerful, but honestly, they're really easy to work with. In fact, all you need to do is go up to Window and select 3D. That will open up this 3D panel, allowing you to really take any layer. I happen to have this text layer right here, and you can turn it into 3D. So it can be a flat plane, it can be extruded, or you can even create a mesh or a basic shape. I'm going to extrude this text, so selecting Extrusion, click Create, and there I have my 3D text. In fact, I can rotate it around. You can see, obviously, it's 3D. But really, look how my 3D panel has changed. This is your new Layers panel, for what it's worth. So always be mindful of what's selected. I was rotating the text because I had that text layer selected. Now I can select Current View, and I can rotate the camera. So see how the shadow stays still? I can adjust it any way I want. Also notice the light source. Selecting that light, and I can actually show that light source. So view, show, and you have ground plane, 3D lights, all of these various options you can show. But at this point, selecting that light, you can see my light source. I can adjust it accordingly and get that to look the way I want it to look. Maybe it's coming from behind, whatever the case may be. Now, I can even manipulate the text that way as well. So look, as I roll over, oh, I can have it stand up so it's facing upward like that. So maybe you want even more control over the position of this text, go into the Properties panel. In fact, right over here, you can see the extrusion depth. In fact, more control over the extrusion. So I can extrude it out like that. I can twist it. I can taper it. Again, a lot more I can do, but I want to just keep this pretty simple for now. So it's just going to be somewhat of an extrusion. Notice how it's floating above the surface. Well. That's the last option right down here. I can move it to the ground just like that. And this is also where you get those specific coordinates. So if I want to make sure it's standing straight up, I can type in 90 degrees. And remember, I can always select current view and rotate it around. And there's my uh, beautiful text. Again, I can select the infinite light and adjust it accordingly and get a nice drop shadow. But what if I decide I actually want to change this 3D element? I actually want to change the text. Maybe I misspelled something. Well, you can do that. In the Properties panel, the very first option, Edit Source, regardless of what it is. Look, it's actually a smart object. You can jump in, change what you want, save that file, close it, and you can see that it's updated there. And I can do a Command-H to hide or Control-H if you're on a PC. But let's take a look at this object a little more closely because as I expand all of its contents, you can see the different materials for the different sides. In fact, as I select a material, you can see over in the properties panel, I get all the different properties for that material. So I can select all the different sides and even jump in and pick a different material from one of these stock materials if I want to. I can have granite, all sorts of different types, even just a, a metal if I want to, just like that. And even from there, uh, you can start to manipulate it more, increase the shine, increase the reflection. But really, now I'm at the point where I actually want to uh, integrate this text into a scene. So. I can create a 3D object and integrate it within this scene. So whether you're creating something or even importing something, which I'll get into in a second, you can actually position it accordingly, which is what I'm going to do now. It's all about adjusting the current view and manipulating the size of the object. All right, and there's the final text. You can see it. You have a whole environment you can deal with where basically this metal texture is reflecting that background image. So you have a lot of control over the texture, over the position, even adding multiple lights. So you get multiple shadows coming from different directions just to make sure it looks like it's well integrated within this scene. And then at this point, you can click this button right down here to render out 
this 3D object. So you're gonna get all of those uh, shadows and reflections to really pop. You can really see how this could be used uh, for creating objects that will fit within a, a real world scene for uh, creating products, uh, used a lot in the automotive industry. So taking something from day to night, 3D gives you that flexibility. But even going back to our example, here you can make something like this unique design made the exact same way you can see it right in here and adjusting the current view that looks pretty good it is just drawing that i've created and then i've extruded but now at this point what i want to do is i want to show you how you can bring in content from another source well from within photoshop you can select get more content to pull in any 3d graphics that uh, are available out there and there's plenty of resources out there this links you to those resources once you have them downloaded you can select a new 3d layer from that downloaded file I actually downloaded this iPhone frame, adding it, and here it is. This is the iPhone frame, so you can literally take items that you've downloaded, you can apply textures to them, do everything that you want to, manipulate them accordingly, even integrate them uh, with something that you have created like I have here. So here's uh, the frame integrated. I'd say that uh, looks pretty good so far and obviously what I'm making here is an iPhone case just to show you the power of what you can do in Photoshop when it comes to 3D printing and you can see right here the final that was also printed from Photoshop. So feel free to check out 3D printing in Photoshop CC as well so you can actually bring your objects into the real world.